how do you stand out when everyone's doing the exact same thing? So it's kind of like when you're in high school and applying to colleges and like do all these extracurriculars and things that help you stand out. It's kind of the same. I, I think what people are so used to is having to have a resume and they go into a job search and they have this resume. I've never actually used a resume um, to get a job. I've just shown up. And if you're in a sales environment, I think it's a little bit easier versus if you're like a doctor or something, you might want to have a resume of like, here, I went to school. But in general, especially for salespeople, if you can just sell yourself or show a way that you've stood out, you've had a personal project, it might seem completely unrelated to the topic that you're, or the task or the job you're trying to get, but it, it's going to help you stand out. It shows you have some, your self-starter, you have some ambition. Two people that have applied to Lavender stood out to me the most. And we had a, we were looking for a, a role and one person was like, I'm interested, how much does it pay? And another person wrote in and said, I don't care about money. I care about working with smart people and solving hard problems. And that stood out to me. Most people don't write in and ask and say, they don't care about money. Most people write in asking, what's the salary? What's the on-target earnings? Things like that. And uh, what we're looking for, especially in our earlier stages, is people that can really get in and, and buy in with us and build something from the ground up. So in our situation, the person that's more like collaborative, wants to solve hard problems, understands that it's hard, they stood out more. And then as you dove deeper, it's like, what things are interesting to you right now? And, and that person was like, well, I'm taking these classes in my spare time about machine learning. I want to get better at AI. And so we're thinking, okay, well, he's spending his, his spare time learning things that would eventually be applicable in our role. So we can assume that there's upward mobility for that person and, and he can expand in, in, his, in his role. That's like a very specific situation that happened to us. But I think the, the lessons there apply no matter what you're trying to do. So if you're looking at all the people that you're competing with, they're all gonna probably have some degree of, of background that might be relevant. And that's like table stakes in the situation. So what are the things that are unique to you, whether it's a hobby or a project you've worked on or even a life experience? Like I traveled the world and I learned about all these different cultures. I can apply that in, in this customer service role because I'm empathetic to tons of different types of people. Whatever it is that you're, you're trying to get across, like what are these special things that are unique to you and how do they fit in with what this company is trying to do? And the company is trying to build and provide value to their customers and their shareholders. And they're looking for people that are going to help them do that in their own special way. So I, I don't think there's like a specific tactic or hack to get a job, but it's understanding that you're competing against everyone else and companies in today's world are less focused on what's on the resume and what's unique about that person and, and how can that unique person really contribute to what the company is trying to accomplish. And I think if you look at it from that angle, a lot of the things that might seem irrelevant to you um, or ir irrelevant in like the job search that's unique to you might actually be what's really important and gets you the job. So looking for those special things that are yours that help you stand out, even though it sounds cliche, I think that's what actually works.